Hey guys, welcome to the show Inside the World of Women's Soccer. This is your host, Eric Beltran. Today we're joined by Lena James, captain, all-conference center back for Liberty Women's Soccer. Happy to have her on the show. I will offer some full disclosure. The beginning portion of this interview did get cut off due to no audio. So still working through the kinks, bear with us, but still a lot of good content here. We're excited to educate, inform, entertain, get some good stories out there. So please like, follow, subscribe. Um, I'm going to be putting Lena's uh, contact information below in the comments. So if you want to reach out to her, by all means, she'd love to help any way she can. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. So in this last piece, you just you just alluded to it. Um, some of the lessons that you learned, you know, by sticking around, by choosing to stay, uh, by not quitting. And so I kind of want to take that a step further and say, like, um, you know, what, what what's your general experience been within this program? OK, so maybe some of the, the memories you hold a little bit tighter, um, some of the lessons you've learned. And um, e even even perhaps when you weren't playing, like some of the silver linings that you saw or, or ways that you saw, you know, your faith grow, your relationship grow, get a little deeper. Um, so touch on that piece. Yeah. Um, I think, honestly, one of my favorite years was my freshman year, which I think is a weird answer um, because uh, you have talked about, like, what this last season was. And mm -hmm. I think it was such, like, a historical season for our program. But memories wise, I think freshman year was one of the best just because I had played under a girl named Cora. Um, and she was probably one of my favorite people I've ever played under. Um, I even she even just snapchatted me the other day, but um, I looked up to her like no one else. Um, she was the captain, she was a center back. Um, she was in my spot, which you would think like, oh, I really don't like her, like, she's so good, she's taking my time, but I have learned so many lessons from how she led the team as a captain, led the team to an ASUN tournament championship, um, the memories I have within that season, um, even though they were on the bench, like, I think it was one of the most fun that I had had, um, but I do think this past year was super, super fun as well, of course, just because of how well we did, um, how I got to play and lead um, some players out there. But I think growing, of course, under Cora, I had learned a bunch. Um, I think having such a horrible experience, or at least not a horrible experience, but um, what I had gone through last season, I think grounding me in my faith and kind of humbling me and being like, no, you can't just come in and expect to get everything you want. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that really helped me trust in God and be like, I'm here for a reason. Um, and which is funny because I had actually prayed to God. I was like, God, it was the end of the spring last year. And I was like, I was playing in the spring, but nothing is guaranteed for the fall. Um, and I was like, I don't know, just like give me a sign. Like, am I supposed to be here? Do you want me to stay? Um, do I follow through with this? And the next week, Lang had called me in and told me that I was, or offered me captain. Wow. Which I was like blown away. I didn't even know that was a possibility. I didn't even know that was up for conversation. Um, and that was kind of just a sign for me being like, okay, God wants me to stay. And even right now with a lot of my close friends leaving um, and a lot of things changing and transitioning, I think like nothing in me wants to leave this program and like I love the girls and I love the coaches and I'm like so happy for another year here so, so cool so good um really really need to see how God kind of worked in that story too yeah um do do want to talk a little bit about a story that I hold pretty near and dear to my heart from your sophomore year okay and so we're playing home game against University of Richmond um Lena had played some in the first half and then when we called the starters for the second half um we, we had elected to go with two other center backs, okay? And so you could kind of see it written all over Lena's face. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a disappointment there. And so I kind of went over and talked to her. I saw it. I said, hey, Lena, like, you know, I think you're still going to have a chance to, to have your say in this game. Like, take it in stride, right? And kind of um, learn from the players on the pitch, you know, so whenever, whenever your number's called, you're ready, okay? And then cool thing is um, she comes in the game and then scores her first college goal. Uh, that kind of seals the win for us. And so I think it's kind of a microcosm of your story overall. Yeah. Um, but for me personally, to see you kind of lead a defense that was the best in our program history was, was so gratifying. And so I think it speaks volumes to um, 
the season you had last spring, you know, how you lead your teammates that they wanted you as a captain. Um, but really, I, w- I want to kind of go into an area of like um, talking about the portal, okay? Yeah. And so last year, um, there was over a thousand players that, that didn't get picked up, okay? So about 40% of the players that went in did, didn't play this fall, okay? And so th- this has become, you know, for lack of a better terms, an issue in our game, you know? And so I think there's a lot of uh, a mindset of kind of like grass is green on the other side. And I think the portal does have a place. You know, Lena mentioned to it, you know, sometimes to get out of an environment that maybe you didn't sign up for. Um, maybe you want to take your graduate somewhere. I, th- I think it does have a place. I think it does have a purpose. Um, and even just this morning, there was over 1,300 players in the portal. Okay? And so, um, what, what do you think it is that maybe is like an allure to the portal? Maybe you think, um, what, what kind of goes in the thought process to maybe some of your peers or uh, people that you know of like, Hey, I think I think this is the best option for me. Why why do you think it's so appealing? I think it gives them an opportunity to go somewhere else, maybe bigger, maybe closer to home, maybe I don't know, just a new environment. I think nowadays with I think ever since COVID hit, honestly, like it's been abused a little here and there. Um just being like, oh, well, I'm not happy, I'm a freshman, let me just go. And, um, or, you know, I know a coach here, let me just leave and try something else. Um, I think it can be very tempting um, for a lot of people, especially when you're not happy and you've gotten everything given to you your whole life. You know, you were the star in high school, you were the star at club, you wanna be that star, Um, but I think college sports is a lot more than that and I think there's a lot more fight in it that you don't understand needs to be there and so like I said earlier I think people think it's always better on the other side but realistically there's problems in every um you know college atmosphere that you're going to get like people are never happy all the time and Mm -hmm. you're going to face different struggles um wherever you go yeah it's true um Kind of want to flip the switch a little bit here. So you know, part of the reason that we're, we're generating this content is um, to help recruits in, in, in the process, okay? Of finding a home, of finding somewhere they want to spend four years. And so um, Lena is obviously someone that's been through that recruitment process. And so really just want to open up for any advice that you have for a prospective student athletes, okay? And so that could be, you know, something that you struggled with in, in the transition, whether that's maybe like, hey, like, you need, y'all really need to focus on fitness. You need to focus on speed of play. Maybe you need to do play summer league. Um, you know, maybe you need to really take a look at who's, you know, valuing you in the process. And so just kind of what you learned from your three years here um, and maybe something that uh, you could t- give them as a tidbit for, for their process. Yeah, I think recruiting is really hard. I think um, it's one of the most difficult times I had had in my experience. But I think just keep going, keep calling, keep emailing, like try everything you can. Um, Look for those coaches. Honestly, for me, it's those that care about you as a person. You're not just a number. Um, Because for them, it's a business. And um, they don't really care, you know, how you feel, um, who you are as a person. And sometimes that can be really degrading. Um, And so I think just finding the spot that feels like home for you is huge. Um, I do think summer league teams are very helpful, especially if you're transitioning into uh, the college level, like your graduating senior, um, cause speed of play, I think for me was the biggest difference. Um, everything's the same in soccer, but it's just picks up speed as you keep going. And so I think that one was really hard. And then of course fitness, just because every program usually has fitness tests. And I know that can be big anxiety. I have it every year. I struggle with it every year, even though, you know, it hasn't been that big of a deal, but um, I do think just pushing yourself through the summer to get ready, it lowers your anxiety because you know you prepared for it. And so I think just even if you do come in and it doesn't work out, keep fighting. Um, learn from those that are above you. Clearly, you can learn so much from the people that are playing, even your peers, um, people in your class that are playing, even when you don't get to, you know, learn from their experiences, learn what they're going through. Um, study the game I don't know just take every opportunity you can to grow yourself um, even if that means you don't get on the field because at the end of the day you know like at Liberty we play for something higher than ourselves and so 
our worth isn't in soccer. And so um, I think it's big knowing that your identity isn't in that, even if you come here for it. But at the end of the day, it, it ends for everyone at some point. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, I, th I think you're a large in a large crowd of people that get anxiety from uh, the beep <laughs> test. So, yeah, yeah fair enough. Um, part of the reason, too, why, why we've generated this content is for to tell cool stories like Lena's. Okay, and so, like I said, that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I think there's a lot of players in the country that have cool stories that we look forward to sharing with you. Okay, and so there's stories that, that deserve to be told. But um, I'd be remiss if I didn't open up the floor to Lena to, to kind of say anything that's going on in, on her heart, okay? And so that's, that could be outside the game of soccer, within the game of soccer. That could be, um, you know, whether she wants to say, hey, like, feel free to reach out to me on social media if anything uh, brought, a, brought a question to your mind. And so I want to be a resource. She wants to be a resource. And um, this, is, this is for y'all. So, like, we want to we grow the game best as we can. Um, but, Lena, that's really what I want to do now is kind of if you have anything that you want to say to the crowd, the audience, um, by all means, the, the floor is yours. Yeah, I think, I guess at the end of the day, we did talk about, you know, the transfer portal. And I think if that is the best decision for you, if you are in a toxic envi environment, you want to go somewhere new, um, definitely take that leap. But also know that I think sometimes it can be so much more gratifying working through a hard time mentally, physically, um, and, you know, earning that role. Um, and so I think that was a big thing for me. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, you can always reach me on Instagram. Um, should I say my at, I guess? Um, I, I can, can go ahead and put it uh, in the comments, okay? okay? And perfect. so I, I'll put her, her information there in the comments. Feel free to reach out. Yeah, um, please. She'd love to hear from you. So we're going to just wrap up the show, but obviously something that, that I care a lot about um, is it, kind of my faith journey, and, and I know Lena's in the same boat. So if y'all would allow me to pray for you, we'll do that, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up here. So Father, thank you so much for... Um, just this wonderful game that you've given us to showcase our talents that you've given us, Father. And um, I pray that we're just able to always glorify you, Lord. I pray and thank you for um, the people that care about women's soccer. You know, like I said, we want to grow the game. Um, and for me personally, and, and I know Lena as well, we want to integrate you into that process, Father. We want to invite you in. And so I pray that everyone's just able to have a blessed holiday season, that they're able to spend time with family, that they're able to grow in their walk with you, Father. And I pray that they're just able to realize that you're loving, you're good. Um, and you seek a relationship with them, Father. So please just uh, bless them on their journey. And you know I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, more co content to follow. But really appreciate you guys. Uh, and take care. Bye-bye.